I was just in an absolute state of like fear and panic. Oh, this bun, it's a bit large, isn't it? Oh well, never mind. Hello and welcome back to my channel. And it is, of course, Sigh With Fry, my new little series where I'm gonna be talking to you about science of human behavior by highlighting a cool research paper and then like talking around the topic in a very relaxed way. And today's topic of interest is all about fear memories. Now, memories are one of our most powerful tools and especially when it comes to remembering really scary events. So for me, I can remember like it was yesterday, the morning of my PhD interview. I was just in an absolute state of like fear and panic. It was my first ever interview for anything in my life. I felt like it was me versus three experts and I had no idea about any of the science and they knew all the science. And I just remember like sitting with a little cup of tea, waiting to go in like, ah. and I'm sure for you, there'll be something really scary that comes to mind. And you can all almost feel the same sensations you felt on the very day when that event happened. If we think of this in terms of our evolution, we can understand why strong fear memories are really important because fear is essential for human survival. If we go back thousands of years and think of our ancestors, if one of them ran into a scary situation and didn't have this really strong recollection of the event, then they wouldn't be able to remember it, to tell other people in their group, and they wouldn't know to avoid it in the future. So fear has enabled us to survive. And really what fear is, is protection from life-threatening events. And you can still definitely rationalize some of the most potent fears today, like a fear of heights, which is called acrophobia. Like you would not catch me doing acrobatics on a tightrope walk because I am petrified of heights. Like even just watching, you know, someone on the telly jumping out of a plane makes my hands sweat. It is, oh, I hate heights so much. And we can understand that having a fear of heights is very rational because being high up and not being stable in the most unfortunate circumstances could lead to death. And same with something like claustrophobia. Claustrophobia can be rationalized because it's a small confined space, which means lack of oxygen, which means suffocation. Okay, I can't talk about this because I hate small spaces as well. There are a lot of fears that are created by our experience and environment. And many of these fears do not serve us at all. So you may have heard of the term xenophobia, and this is the fear of foreign people or people not like oneself. This fear has created so much angst, unrest, death, war. It's really sad that a way our world currently works is to suppress others and using xenophobia is a tactic which is employed by many, many countries and it serves absolutely no purpose but to cause unrest. And then there are the fears, you know, in our own selves. And some of these can feel like, as an individual, the scariest fears to exist. This includes the fear of failure, the fear of not being seen as successful. So many individuals harbor this fear and it can be really life limiting, not push you out your comfort zone and make you stay exactly where you are. This fear really, really hits home with me because for the longest time in my life, I have been a perfectionist. I have always aimed for being perfect and that's perfect in every aspect in terms of my grades, in terms of my friendships, in terms of my hobbies, always coming up as the top of the game in everything. And what that has really done for me is prevented me from going after things where I might fail because I never want to be seen as not perfect. So that is a real fear in me, this fear of failure. And whenever I'm scared of doing something that might cause me to fail, my memory, fear memory kicks in and reminds me of the times in the past where I have failed and how crappy I have felt after it. This is something I'm now massively working on with mindset work and I'm recording that journey on my YouTube channel as well. It is really hard but so necessary for any type of growth. Understanding the biological underpinnings of fear memories and what makes them so strong is starting to finally be understood which I personally find really helpful in rationalizing what fear is because fear is a biological process and it does hold a lot of us back when really it is a signal, an electrical impulse in our brains which resonates through our body. That is what fear is. So understanding its biology, to me, helps me feel more powerful than the fear itself. And also therapeutically, if we understand how these fear memories work, we can then target these processes in the brain in order to aid individuals with life-limiting fear conditions like post-traumatic stress disorder. And a study published recently 
definitely gives us a little bit more of an idea of how these fear memories are formed and why they are so strong. So a little analogy of the brain and making memories. I like to think of the brain as an internet browser with tabs constantly opening. Your brain has to decide which of these tabs has important information that it wants to hold onto. And it will bookmark those tabs with that information which is deemed important enough. And if the pages which are bookmarked are visited enough times in the near future, this will then be stored as a permanent file on your computer. This is like how the brain processes incoming information and turns that experience into a long-term memory. Our brain is constantly stimulated by so many different experiences, but not all of them are deemed important enough to be stored in our long-term memory. But when the brain decides that something is important enough, it will hardwire that into your brain by strengthening connections between neurons in different brain regions. A vital structure in this bookmarking event is called the hippocampus. And we know that the hippocampus is so important for making long-term memories because if it is removed, which it actually has been in someone, memories of new experiences can no longer be formed. The hippocampus is buried quite deep in the brain in a region called the medial temporal lobe and it is connected to many other brain regions. And this includes one called the amygdala. Now you may have heard of the amygdala before, it's often described as being the fear region. It's actually involved in quite a lot of emotional processing and also in directing and augmenting the fight or flight response in the body. So a very emotional area of the brain. There are specific brain cells or neurons in the hippocampus which send out projections to the amygdala, so a specific subset of neurons. And a new study has uncovered how this population of cells encodes fear memories and also what makes them so strong. The setup to learn about these memories involved fear conditioning in mice. Now what this involves is giving a mouse a foot shock when a tone is played and this creates a memory associating the tone with fear. The next day when the mouse hears the tone again it will display freezing behavior so it will freeze because it associates that sound with the foot shock. The researchers were able to look at the specific cells which project from the hippocampus to the amygdala in these mice during this response by using calcium imaging and calcium activity is an indicator of neuron activity in the brain. So during that initial shock process, the researchers found that these cells that project to the amygdala were active. So they called them shock response neurons. But the day later when they looked in the mice, when they played the tone and the mouse froze, they found that these neurons not only were activated, but were synchronized. Synchronization of neurons means many neurons firing at the same time. And this will mean that the receiving area of the brain, which in this case is the amygdala, will receive a really big signal. If one neuron fires, you get a small release of chemicals which will stimulate that area but if you imagine many neurons firing together that is a large signal so it's like shouting hey instead of one neuron just being like hey so you can imagine the amygdala will be switched on pretty powerfully by this event by this synchronous firing of the shock response neurons the researchers also found that the more synchronized these neurons were so the more collectively they fired the stronger the fear memory was what this means is we could have a mechanism here for why fear memories are so strong and why also certain fear memories are stronger than others the researchers also showed that when the shock response neurons had their activity Activity inhibited during that first initial shock, the freezing response was lessened in these mice. So that indicates that these cells are vital in making the fear memory in the first place. So now what we have here is a specific population of cells in the brain of these mice, which looks like they augment the formation of fear memory and the strength of their signaling also directs how strong the fear memory is. So if there could be a way to lessen this event, this could help reduce the level of fear associated with some memories. And if we see similar activities in the brains of humans, because of course this research was in mice, so we need to see if the cells that were active in the mice also work in the same way in humans. But if this mechanism is transferable, what we could do here is target these cells to reduce the levels of fear associated with certain memories and potentially really help individuals with conditions like PTSD. And also if this mechanism exists in humans, we could then study more readily the association between certain events and fear in the human brain and this could do a lot for individuals with other life
life limiting fears and internal fears and really help us to overcome this biological activity. I think it is always so rationalizing to understand the science behind our behaviors and our brain. Fear is generated from our experience and maintained by connections in our brain and activated by electrical impulses. That's what fear is on a biological level. And many of our own fears about our abilities and beliefs comes from our thought and the wiring in our brains. By truly understanding what fear is and why we have such strong associations with certain events and certain behaviors and fear can really help us reclaim the power back over those certain behaviors. So boss research, super cool and really applicable if this is also the case in humans. So thank you so much for watching. I will be back next week with more science. And if you are liking the channel, please feel free to subscribe. Any comments, messages, you know what to do. You can leave a comment below or jump into my DMs on social media and I will get back to you. Catch you next time.